In part one of the story of the IndyCar Aeroscreen, we discussed how the deaths of Justin Wilson and Jules Bianchi led to innovations in safety for both Formula One and IndyCar. In part two, we explain how the stalled windscreen project led IndyCar to partner with Red Bull for the development of the Aeroscreen, an evolution of the F1 Halo concept, and a new chapter in the design and safety of open wheel racing. <laughs> With the windscreen project on hold, IndyCar explores their options. One positive from the recent tests proved that IndyCar had a viable screen in terms of visibility, with minimal distortion and reflection and varying light. The series updates the teams during winter testing at Coda on the status of the windscreen. It also pitches the idea of a joint effort with Red Bull on further development of their aero screen concept. With positive feedback from the teams, they were able to take their data to Red Bull to discuss options for the next step. By February of 2019, IndyCar had a plan in place and announces a new component that would be added to the cars by the Indy 500. Called the AFP, or Advanced Frontal Protection, it was the first phase of a two-part process for introducing the aero screen. Made of titanium and weighing just five pounds total, the AFP is thinner than the F1 Halo base and had passed the same load testing as the roll hoop atop the car. The AFP is bolted onto the chassis centerline ahead of the cockpit with brackets and reinforcements built into the monocue for support. According to IndyCar President Jay Fry, we've worked really hard the last couple of years to come up with a solution. This is phase one of that solution. Phase two will be announced sometime in May. This is the first piece of that process. This process actually began in 2012 and we resurrected it. We were confident of what this piece can do, so we were able to get it on the car now. First tests of the AFP were conducted in April during open tests at IMS Oval. Two days later, the series announced mandated implementation of AFP ahead of schedule at the IndyCar Grand Prix, two weeks before the Indy 500. Driver Will Power said additional cockpit protection was greatly anticipated. When you have a car crash in front of you on a super speedway, the amount of stuff that goes flying, it's really the luck of the draw whether it hits you. The windscreen can't come soon enough. You have to hand it to President Jay Fry. He gets after it in terms of safety and is really, really good. Driver James Hinchcliffe welcomed the development having suffered a concussion in 2014 when he was struck on the head by debris. Obviously, this is just step one in an evolution of head protection, but having been hit by a piece of debris that would have been prevented with this device, I'm all for it. It's also comforting to know that behind the scenes, we are still working hard on a more comprehensive solution. The AFP is mandated for the remainder of the 2019 season, and just two weeks later at the Indy 500, the long-awaited announcement of the Aeroscreen finally arrives. In the end, the Aeroscreen came together over the course of one year with Red Bull's help, relying on four plus years of research and development. Extensive simulator testing took place at Dallara's Research Center in Indiana while the prototype was produced. According to Jay Fry, the development process went smoothly. To me, that's the most amazing thing is that this project has happened in a year. Part of it was because obviously Red Bull had already been down the road with their application for the Formula One car, but it didn't necessarily fit our car. So that had to be re-engineered, redesigned based off of the principles that they had already learned. On-track testing first took place in October of 2019 at IMS, followed by three more at various tracks to replicate the diverse conditions of the IndyCar schedule. The final product was delivered to teams at the end of 2019, with its first official race taking place in June of 2020 at the delayed season opener at Texas Motor Speedway. The Aeroscreen is a collaboration between several companies. Red Bull designs the overall concept, PPG produces the windscreen, Delara makes the air ducts, and Pankel produces the titanium frame. It weighs roughly 50 pounds and consists of the PPG polycarbonate laminated ballistic windscreen attached to a titanium frame and can be fitted or removed in less than 15 minutes. The frame consists of five pieces of 3D printed titanium welded together and machined, which are x-ray inspected and 3D measured for accuracy. It can withstand 34,000 pounds and increases the stiffness of the tub by more than 10%. For cooling, air inlets can be piped into the driver's helmet, with additional vents added to the front of the Dallara chassis aimed into the cockpit. Additional inlets in the nose of the car can be opened and ducted to cool the driver's legs. To prevent fogging, the aeroscreen has a heating element in the middle of the laminate and can accommodate up to eight tear-offs on the outside of the screen before distortion occurs. According to Jay Fry, the aeroscreen so far has surpassed expectations. The halo is great. It's worked. We've seen it work. It does one thing. The AFP device does one thing. We think this is more of a total solution. It does both. It has the load bearing capabilities on the top. It has the frontal impact piece for things coming at you. We did a load test on the titanium top frame. 
we got to a certain number and that was 34,000 pounds, which is basically six Chevrolet Silverados stacked on top of each other. And it passed that test. At that point, we just really stopped. It basically exceeded all of our expectations and all the testing too. Driver Will Power commented after early testing of the AeroScreen. When you have driven it for a day, you will feel naked without it because there's so much protection there. I am so happy that we have it. It really is a huge step in safety. It is the best of both worlds in that you have a halo and a screen. And driver Simon Pagino said this during winter testing at Coda. It's an evolution. It's a great evolution into safety. We're all going to have to get used to it for sure, but all positive today. Honestly, it felt great in the wet. Visibility might even be better than it would be with the helmet alone, as water seemed to disperse better on the aero screen. According to Fry, he expects more developments to come once the 2020 season progresses. Once we hand something off to our teams, these are great race teams. They'll figure out how to make it even better. So over the course of this season, I'm sure there are things that we'll do and learn that can be applied for the future.